Okay, everybody, this is my first video in the things that help or that I hope are going to help series that I'm doing. And the first thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit is probably something you've heard a little bit a lot. It's about uh, self-esteem and self-respect. I've been noticing that um, during my growing up years, a lot of people called it self-esteem. That's where you care enough about yourself to treat yourself well. And, um, and then I've noticed that I guess during my mom's a period of time, a lot of the people that were alive back then here in the United States seem to refer to it a lot as self-respect. And <clears throat> once again, I think that has a lot to do with uh, how you treat yourself as a person. And um, so one thing I wanted to emphasize in this video is that uh, first of all, I think we all understand the idea that you're the only person who you can control. Uh, you're the only person that you're in charge of. Obviously, we understand that. But I think sometimes we, um, when we get um, into dealing with other people, that sometimes we exhibit behaviors that make it seem like we're think, we think that we know what is good for everyone else. And that can get us into a lot of trouble. Um, I know that as parents, we have to look out for our children. And I think that that's the only other people really that we are set in charge of to look out for someone else, to teach them, to help them to stay safe, to set boundaries for them. So that way they don't get hurt and stuff like that. Um, and I think a lot of us understand that concept as well. But as far as... Um, um, sometimes with regard to ourselves, we forget that we need to treat ourselves well. And, um, there are kind of three categories that I want to talk about just a little bit. It's not going to take too long. Um, I'll probably just say one or two things about it. And, you know, I may elaborate on some of these ideas more in different videos that I do, but, um, First of all, we have our body, and then we have our um, spiritual side of ourselves, and we have our mind and our emotions, you know, and that's kind of seems to be a little bit like a combination of our spiritual side and our physical side. And um, one day I was thinking that, um, you know, a lot of people will spend just thousands of dollars putting you know, a new porch on their house or adding on another room to their house because it's an important place. It's an invest, a place that they invest in. You know, it's a place where you live in. And um, eventually when you sell your house again, you're going to get a financial return on it. And so people don't think too much about taking the time to uh, make a financial investment on a house. But uh, when you think about your body, your body is what you live in all the time. You know, you don't live in your house all the time. You go other places, you come back home to your house, but your body, you live in it all the time. And I think that um, it's really important to take care of your body because of that. And some of the things that you need to do to take care of your body, obviously, is food, uh, exercise, and um, work. And then also, you know, there are other things that we've been told, such as to stay away from anything that's addictive. And um, <clears throat> with regard to food, I think that most of the people I know, we, you know, all kind of eat the same things. But I think there's always room for improvement. And for the most part, you can find things in your own diet that you know that are bad for you and, you know, start getting rid of those kinds of things and putting in things that you know are a lot better for you, such as drinking more water and um, eating a lot more fruits and vegetables and um, things of that nature. So I think that you can always uh, do stuff like that. Um, a lot of people, most of the people that I know, they exercise, they get some type of exercise. I've only met um, a few people that I've actually heard say that, oh, I'm just not the type to exercise. I don't exercise and that's just not what I do. Um, 
one thing I, I thought about when I was younger is that, you know, when we have children, we make a decision that our lives aren't just ours anymore. They belong to someone else now because we've made a commitment to be there for another person. And um, so when we think about the choices that we make in our life, we need to think that our lives don't only just belong to us, they belong to our kids, they belong to our grandkids. And if possible, it's good for us to have our older years be years where we, our bodies haven't completely fallen apart because we've neglected them and thereby have become, you know, hopefully not a burden on the people that we would really like to be there for as less than a burden. And I know that sometimes there are things that happen to us that make us sick that are completely and utterly out of our control. But there are some things that are within our control to make sure uh, that we can do to, to make sure that we stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible. And this is the kind of stuff that um, makes us so that as we get older, we're there for our kids. You know, we can um, have the freedom to come and go as we please and be able to uh, be there for other people like our children and grandchildren. So um, with regard to exercise and things like that, you know, even just picking up things like walking regularly or um, doing yoga, there's a lot of things you can find on the internet that are pretty easy on your body that, um, you know, you can stay within the limitations of your own body and find things that you can do to help yourself be stronger and healthier. And um, also one thing that people do that uh, they probably don't even think about that keeps them healthy is working. Um, a lot of the things that we do, especially things that require physical labor, are healthy for us. And then even the things that don't require physical labor, like if we are a provider in our home and we have to take care of children, those types or family members or, you know, ourselves, um, work actually is something that's very healthy for our minds. Um, your mind and your emotions are really important and you can get sick from what I've seen. You can get sick from doing things that, um, that are crazy. You know, people do crazy things all the time, but you know, if it's a, becomes a, a way of life and a habit, um, there are a lot of things that can make you emotionally and um, can kind of tip your brain into being mentally unstable. And I've kind of noticed that too when I see people. Um, sometimes it appears that things like um, just being hateful, being vindictive, um, being angry all the time, trying to control other people and manage their lives all the time, like you think they don't have a brain to think for themselves and so you're trying to tell them what to do all the time. Um, as you're an adult and as you get older, uh, things like that are pretty unhealthy ways to behave and um, they can make you emotionally and mentally ill over time. I, I kind of think that um, uh, people that really, really treat other people poorly um, over long periods of time that it affects um, the balance inside your brain. And so I think, um, you know, we're taught uh, spiritually now, getting into the spiritual side, side of things, we're taught to, um, for me, being a Christian person, um, Christian means that I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he's God. And I believe that he lived here on the earth and that we're, we, sh we would do best to pattern our lives after him. And there are many things that um, we learned about him, you know, in the scriptures and about his uh, way of living, the way he did things, the way he taught us to do things and the example that he set for us. And I think that that way of living is the healthiest that you could live. And um, I think that being healthy spiritually leads us to um, being healthy, um, more healthy in our bodies, 
and having a more healthy mind and emotion, emotions. And all of this goes into your self-esteem and your self-respect. Um, this is uh, when you treat yourself in a way where you don't let others hurt you, where you don't hurt yourself and where you don't hurt other people. You're living in a way that is, um, that is going to make it so that this earth is a much easier place for you to be able to navigate through in life. Um, for example, when I said, don't let others hurt you, um, one thing I like to say to remind myself is that no one can stop you from being abused but you. And um, I know a lot of times, um, I've done it in the past and I see other people do it, you know, we, we go and complain about how someone else has treated us. And yes, we have to, you know, if you feel like you have to talk about it to somebody, it's a good thing to do. And I've noticed in myself in the past that um, sometimes it seemed like when I was talking to someone about them, I, I really wanted some help and I wanted some help from someone else. And I wasn't saying that I wanted help per se from someone else, but then I realized that there was part of me that wanted someone to come and fix the problem. And the thing is, is that um, when it came down to it, you know, the only one that can stop anyone from treating me bad is me. And um, so I have to learn how to set good boundaries between me and other people. And having grown up in a, a home where there was a, my mom was a single mom, it was hard for me to learn to make those kind of boundaries when I was in relationships. And there were plenty of times that I had to say no to relationship because it wasn't healthy. And, um, because I, uh, I need to live a healthy life and that's a part of, you know, self, self-esteem, self-respect. And also, even if you're going to stay in a relationship that you think is worth having, you still have to have, um, a healthy self-esteem for yourself where you're not going to let people treat you in a bad way. So you have to set boundaries for yourself so that other people can't do bad things to you. You know, you say, this is what I will accept. That's what a boundary is. Um, and um, also with regard to, um, you know, don't hurt yourself. There are some things that are good for your body and there are some things that aren't. Like for example, you know, you wouldn't pour water into your transmission. You wouldn't grab dirt and put it, hopefully you wouldn't, you know, into your gas tank of your vehicle because you know that that's not what it takes and you know that it's going to, um, it's the vehicle's going to die and it's going to be really expensive trying to fix it. It's, it's something that you need and your body's like that too. It's something that you need. And so there are some things that are built for our bodies and there are some things that aren't. And, um, so it's important to put the things into your body that are for your body and no matter what other people are doing, no matter if they think it's fun or whatever, don't put stuff into your body that is not meant for your body. There's a whole slew of drugs out there. There's alcohol, smoking, you know, things that just aren't good for your body. They're not made for your body. They're, they're, they exist on the earth. They can be used for other purposes, but they're not meant to be inhaled. They're not meant to be, um, drank and they're not meant to be, um, you know, and however else you want to get it into your body. Um, when your body senses that the one person that is supposed to care about your body is the one that's hurting it, that's when you start having problems with that part inside of you that needs to be taken care of. So make sure that you're not putting things into your body that hurt your body because then you're the one that's doing the hurt to yourself. And the part of you that's inside of you, um, a lot of people, a lot of psychologists call it your, your inner, your inner self, your inner child. Sometimes people will refer to it as that part of you that needs to be loved and taken care of. Um, if you're the one that's putting the stuff into your body to hurt it, then what happens is that you don't even feel loved by yourself. And that's a pretty dangerous place to be. So, um, 
Also, another thing is what we're talking on this subject is don't hurt other people. When you hurt other people, you're actually just hurting yourself. Um, there are a lot of people in my life that, you know, um, when I was growing up, that probably shouldn't have done things, you know, that they did, said things, done things, you know, and, um, but I've had a lot of people that did a lot of good things. And there are things that I've done that I'm sure have hurt other people as well. And as we grow up, you know, we learn to stay away from the things um, that are hurtful to ourselves, but also to stay away from doing things that are hurtful to other people. And, um, you know, sometimes a person will have been maybe cheated on, for example, and then because they've been cheated on, they feel so hurt that they go and cheat on someone else. But the thing is, is that's not going to help you feel better. Um, it's actually going to make you feel worse. And so um, there is a part of us that wants to be noble and wants to be good. And that part of us doesn't want to do to other people the bad things that other people have done to us. And so um, we can be the opposite of what other people have done to us. We can lift other people up instead of putting them down. And, um, you know, a lot of people talk about karma. They talk about what goes around, comes around. And I'm 44 years old now, and there is not a time that I haven't seen what goes around, comes around, both for good and for bad. And um, there is not a thing that I haven't done that was bad that didn't come around and end up hurting me later. And something even worse happened to me, you know, and there's... Um, um, you know, I'm not saying that I'm like super horrible or anything like that, but I've made mistakes like everyone else. I'm not perfect, you know, but I'm not going to sit out here and list all my imperfect qualities. Um, but the thing is, is that no one is perfect. And um, basically, when you're looking at yourself and your life from a place of self-respect, from a place of self-esteem, that's where we're deciding, making a decision for ourselves that no matter what has happened to us, um, we're going to live and we're going to make something good of our lives. And, um, you know, we're making the decision that yes, we are important. Yes, our kids are important. You know, they, these are the main people that we're in charge of. Of course, if we're married or something, we have a spouse, but we're not in charge of making decisions for our spouse. You know, we're in charge of making decisions for us and for our kids because they're still minors. And um, anyway, so that's just a, a little bit about uh, self-esteem and self-respect and um, the reason that we do it. And basically, it's making the choice to take care of yourself. And it's not something selfish where you're gonna take care of yourself and only yourself, you know. Um, our lives affect other people. And like I was saying before, if we hurt other people, then we're hurting ourselves. And um, if we're doing good to other people, we're doing good to ourselves. And, um, you know, our, our children rely on us, especially when they're in our care until they're 18, to, um, to think of them before we think of ourselves. And that is one of the most ennobling things that you can do as an adult is to make sure that um, you do the best you can to, to take good care of your kids. And um, that is a part of having a healthy self-esteem and a healthy self-respect. And that's all I'm going to add on this one for now. And I hope you guys got something out of it and um, like I said maybe later on I'll elaborate a little bit more on some of these other topics. Have a good day.